A warm greeting, today is Monday, April 22, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. As I mentioned in Saturday's video, today I would like to talk a bit about the latest projections from seasonal models, as well as the predictions from expert groups forecasting cyclonic activity in the Atlantic Ocean. In the months before hurricane season begins, the main factor meteorologists monitor is the anomalies in sea surface temperatures. First, in the equatorial region of the Pacific, where we have the ENSO oscillation. It is here that La Niña or El Niño conditions develop. This is important to understand how much cyclonic activity we anticipate in the Atlantic, because during El Niño phenomena, cyclonic activity tends to be suppressed by shearing winds moving over the Caribbean region, while the opposite occurs during La Niña events, where shearing winds decrease in this area, favoring greater cyclonic activity. We also closely monitor the sea surface temperatures in the main cyclonic development region because when the waters are warmer than usual in this area, it represents a greater risk of increased cyclonic activity in the Atlantic Ocean. Before moving on to the projections of global models, I wanted to review with you what this graph means. Remember that these are temperature anomalies, that is, how different surface temperatures of the oceans are from what is considered normal for this date. For example, in places where we see yellow or reddish colors, this represents that the temperatures are warmer than they are supposed to be for this date, while when we have these blue colors, they represent temperatures that are cooler than usual for this date. I mention this because this map does not show surface temperatures, but rather anomalies, indicating how different it is from what is expected for this date according to historical averages. For example, the following graph is the one that really shows us how the temperatures are at the moment, where in the legend we see different colors representing the sea surface temperatures. For instance, in yellow, orange, and red colors are temperatures exceeding 26.5 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature typically needed to see tropical cyclone development. When we see these reddish or yellowish colors in the tropical Atlantic region, it means that these temperatures are warmer than they are supposed to be for today, April 22nd. Remember that as we approach summer, temperatures will continue to rise. This happens every year because in summer, the sun shines more directly on the northern hemisphere of the planet. That's why starting from March and April of every year, temperatures in the North Atlantic warm up as we approach the peak in September. It is precisely for this reason that we see greater cyclonic activity between the months of August, September, and October. Something that we have paid close attention to this year is that these temperature anomalies currently found in the tropical Atlantic far exceed what is normal for this time of year. At the moment, we are at historically record levels, even hotter than 2023, which was the previous record. The projection is that most likely, as the waters continue to warm up as they do every year, we may stay above what we saw in 2023. This is why we say there is a greater risk of cyclone formation in the Atlantic. As an example, it is supposed that by April 22, the sea surface temperatures in the North Atlantic should be between 19 to 19.5 degrees Celsius. However, we are currently close to 20.5 degrees Celsius. We are talking about 1 degree Celsius above normal. Having explained this, let's now look at the latest projections from global models for the hurricane season. Let's start with the North American multimodal, where we can see that over the next few months, and just before the peak of the season, they continue to project the development of La Nina phenomenon in the Pacific. Meanwhile, the North Atlantic, especially the tropical Atlantic, will continue with temperatures above normal. However, note that they are projecting that these temperature anomalies, especially between the Caribbean and Africa, may not be as significant as we have seen at the moment. But as we explained at the beginning of the video, this does not mean that the Atlantic will cool down, but rather it will be warming up, but it seems that by the peak of the season, the anomalies will not be as strong as we have at the moment. I also wanted you to pay attention to the Caribbean Sea region, where there are really no changes in anomalies over the next few months. It seems that it will be extremely hot for the peak of the season. In terms of rainfall projections, also note that more rainfall than usual is forecasted across the tropical Atlantic, especially in the Caribbean Sea region. This may be associated with the passage of strong tropical waves and potentially cyclonic activity. This graph is for the months of August, September, and October, which is the peak of the season. Furthermore, we have the CANSIPS model, which in its latest run also shows the development of La Nina in the Pacific. Consequently, it reduces the shear winds in the Atlantic and also shows a tropical Atlantic and Caribbean sea with temperatures above normal for the peak of the season. Like the North American multimodal, it also indicates that high temperature anomalies may be less extreme than what we saw earlier this year. However, note that the Caribbean Sea seems to maintain temperatures well above normal. This is why it also forecasts more rainfall activity focused mainly in the Caribbean Sea region. This represents a greater risk for Central America and the Caribbean islands. 
We also see higher than usual rainfall activity for the peak of the season between the Caribbean and Africa, suggesting a fairly active Cape Verde season. Additionally, the CFS model shows the same trends. The development of La Nina in the Pacific, and the tropical Atlantic and Caribbean Sea with temperatures above normal. Also, precipitation anomalies above normal from Africa to the Caribbean. Lastly, the ensemble of European models also indicates the development of La Nina for the peak of the season. Moreover, a significantly warm tropical Atlantic, but particularly in the Caribbean Sea region where the intensity of anomalies seems to persist for the months of August, September, and October. Therefore, these models also project increased rainfall activity for the Caribbean Sea during the peak of the season and a quite active tropical convergence zone, which increases the risk of cyclonic formation and the likelihood of seeing major hurricanes. For example, the cyclonic activity forecast from the European model released in April is extremely aggressive regarding the formation of cyclones in the Atlantic. It projects that between May and October, there will be 21 tropical storms when the normal number is 14. Additionally, it forecasts 11 hurricanes when the normal count is 7. In terms of accumulated cyclone energy, it projects that this hurricane season could be 70% more active than what is considered normal. This is why we say that forecasts indicate it will be a hyperactive season as the percentage of accumulated cyclone energy exceeds 60% of what is normal according to climatology. And although these are projections from global models, we also have the forecast from experts in tropical meteorology. You can see that they are all predicting a more active season than usual. In fact, on average, they are forecasting 23 tropical storms, five of which could be major hurricanes, meaning category 3, 4, or 5. These projections far exceed what is considered a normal hurricane season. Among these forecasts, some groups stand out, such as Penn State University, which is forecasting 33 tropical storms. Additionally, we have Weather Bell forecasting 28 tropical storms, and the University of Colorado forecasting 23 tropical storms. So, these are very high numbers for groups that are typically conservative in their forecasts. I think what's most impressive in these forecasts is the number of hurricanes they are projecting. For example, Weather Bell is forecasting 15 hurricanes, while the University of Colorado and Weather Channel are forecasting 11 hurricanes. This would represent quite high cyclonic activity with many tropical systems that could reach hurricane status and major hurricanes. It's important that, as we do every year, we prepare in the regions of the United States, the Caribbean, Mexico, and Central America. Well, that's all for this video. In the next one, we'll talk about how much cyclonic activity we can expect for the Eastern Pacific region and this is of interest to the western coast of Central America and Mexico. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info, don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking on the red button below the video that says subscribe. Then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when we upload new videos. So, until next time, I hope you have a great day.